Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in a Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three ways where you can reduce the amount of data or the number of rows that you're pulling into Power BI Desktop, but still provide the flexibility so that you can adjust that filter that you set when you publish the report out to the service. Stay tuned. If you're finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. All right, a lot of times we need to minimize, reduce the number of rows that we pull down into Power BI Desktop when we're, when we're building our models on a local machine. There, it's a lot of different reasons that we may wanna do this, right? Maybe our machine doesn't have a lot of resources. Maybe the source just has billions of billions of rows and we don't wanna wait for all that to load into the desktop because it take a while. And we just want a subset of that data. How do you handle that? There's lots of ways to do it when you're importing the data, right? And it's a lot of you goes, oh, Patrick, I know how to do this, but how do you provide the flexibility so when you publish it out, it's easy to adjust it in the service? And some of you may be thinking, well, I have premium, a premium per user, and I can just, use the ALM toolkit to do a schema deployment. You showed us how to do that, Patrick. Well, everyone doesn't have premium and premium per user. So this is not a premium or premium per user video, right? Anyone with a pro license can definitely do this, okay? So enough of all this talk. Can you guys know what I like to do? Let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So the first way is if you have access to the source. And in this case, it's specific to a relational database. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not just gonna focus on relational database. The, the last two steps will work on any source. If you have access to the source, like a relational database, use the tool of choice. And what you would do is you would create a view that will filter the data, that will limit the data down by some condition. In my case, I'm doing it by year. I'm saying only give me the data where the date is greater than or equal to 2005. Then I go over to Power BI Desktop, I connect and I import the data. Once the data is imported in the Power BI Desktop and I've modeled everything out, what I'll do is publish the report up to the service. Once it's published to the service, what I do is go back to the source or talk to whoever you know has access to the source and say hey can you modify that view and remove that where clause and then I do my refresh I don't have to change anything out in the service I don't have to redeploy my PBIX file I don't have to use the ALM toolkit or XMLA endpoints I just say hey change the view then I refresh then it pulls all the data in my source the second way is about using the reduce rows feature in Power Query. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Head over to Power BI Desktop and I'm gonna choose Transform. You would create a parameter and you create this parameter and you tell it, hey, I wanna keep this number of rows, okay? Let me show you what it looks like. Let's go to Manage Parameters and you can see it's a decimal. The current value is 100. When you're using this method, you cannot choose any or binary. It will not work. You can use any other data types, but you just cannot use any or binary. And so you get that parameter created and then you go back to your data set. There's a section, if you click Home in the ribbon, you'll see it says Reduce Rows. I'm gonna use Keep. There's Keep Top Rows, Keep Bottom Rows, Keep Range of Rows. I'm just gonna say Keep Top Rows. So we'll Keep Top Rows and we're going to choose 1000 and click OK. What it's going to do is it adds an additional step. And if we go into the query editor, you can see what it does, right? So now it's returning keep rows and it's always going to return a thousand rows. I'm going to overwrite this 1000 with my parameter number of rows. And Alex Powers is probably really excited that I'm showing Power Query. And then he's probably sad because he goes, oh, I know another way to do this, but it's OK. So we choose result. I'm going to say if because it's case sensitive number of rows is greater than zero, keep first rows. Else, I want it to return this. So basically what the logic is doing is saying, if I specify a number of rows, use the filter. Otherwise, don't use the filter and just return my data as is. And then I'm gonna change this to result. And then I click done. Before I click close and apply, let's change this to a thousand. So I'm gonna choose close and apply. Do, 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 thousand rows. If I go here and say edit my parameters, or you can go back to Power Query, and I'm going to set this to zero. Either way, update my parameter, choose OK. I got to click apply changes. And then what it's going to do is because it is zero, it's just going to skip the filter and just return all my rows, which is about 546,000 rows. Boom. And now you may be thinking, well, Patrick, what about the service? What happens when I publish this? Because you may have it set to a thousand or a hundred thousand when you're working with it locally, but when you go all the way up, how do I adjust it? Let me show you. 
So once it's published out to the service, what you would do is go to the workspace, click on the data sets, and you can choose schedule refresh. And when you choose schedule refresh, you'll see an option for parameters. And this is where if you use a binary or any, it won't show up here. But if you use any other data types, it'll show. So you can see I have mine set to zero, which will return all the rows. But let's set it to something crazy like 152,000. There we go, set my parameters. And then if I go do a refresh of that data set, it'll take a minute or so to refresh the data set. Once the data set is refreshed, let's go over to the report and 152,000. If I go change to zero, it'll pull all the data. I don't need any XMLA endpoint. I don't need the LM2 kit. I just can use the parameter option that's available on my data set and adjust it there and it just works. And then now you may be thinking, well, Patrick, I don't want to do a keep 1000 because it may not give me, you know, a set, a data set that's indicative of what I'm trying to do. I may not be able to create the measures and make sure that the measures are doing exactly what I need them to do. It may not pull in all the categories. It may not pull in a good representative sample of the data. And I want to choose a date range because I know a date range, I can handle it. And some of you guys may be thinking we should use incremental refresh. Well, if you use incremental refresh, those parameters that you create for incremental refresh, they won't appear in the parameters options on the schedule refresh. So you don't want to use those if you want to control this. If you want to use incremental refresh, set it up. And I got lots of videos that show you how to do it that way. But if you want to use some type of date, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to show you, right? So that's option number three. You can use a column, right? You can use a column like a date or a string or something like that. But you need to make sure that it represents the entire data set. Let me show you. So what you can do here is very similar to what you did with the top rows. You go into the query editor. You can create a couple of parameters. You see, I have one created here. I'm going to add one more new parameter. Let's just call this end date. And let's just say March 16th, 2021. And we're going to make this a date time and click OK. So I have my new parameters. And just like incremental refresh, you can pick a date. If you don't want to use a date, you can use another column and I can choose multiple sales territories. Not sure that's going to represent all my data. So that's why I'm using the date. And then I can use any of these options last year, weekdays, anything like that. I like to use custom. You could play around with this and choose whatever you want. So I'm going to say after or equal to and before or equal to, and then I'm going to choose my parameters just like incremental refresh. Click OK and watch this. If we go here, I don't have to really do anything to the code because it automatically adds my parameters for me. Click done click close and apply. What it's going to do is refresh my data based on those requirements. And what I did was I added these two dates on my report. So you can see the maximum and the minimum date, and then you publish it out to Power BI. So we're going to go ahead and publish this out to our workspace. And once it's published, we'll go to the service. And just like with the top, when you use the reduce rows, we'll be able to go adjust those parameters because of their data type. So now we're all published out. So then we'll go to the service, see our new data set, and you'll, we'll go to schedule refresh and we'll see our two parameters here and we can see that it's 2021 to 2019 we're going to adjust it because we only need three months from january 1st to march 16th we'll click apply and then what we're going to do is refresh this so let's go ahead and refresh the data set there we go and now let's go back to our report and then what you'll see is now it's just you know those three months of data with that small number of rows. How do you do this today? What if you your machine can't handle it and you not you don't you don't intend to use incremental refresh? You just want to minimize the number of rows in the desktop, but then load a bigger set in the service. I'd love to know how you're handling this today. Are you using this approach? Either way, you know what to do. Let's continue the conversation where in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. You like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself. Thanks for watching. We'll see ya, see ya, see ya in the next video.